Hey guys, welcome to another um, Let's Play. We're going to be doing Penumbra Overture. Now, I haven't stopped the uh, Amnesia Let's Play, but because of, um, well, my friend Chewie and I, we both have different schedules, in a sense, I guess, so he's not on as much as I am, and vice versa, usually. And so what will happen is, um, what's it called? Uh, like, he might be on mine, but I won't be, and vice versa. So... Um, I'm just gonna do this just so that, you know, I have some videos to upload for, you know, just the sake of uploading. And, um, this will be my second time, second or third time recording the first beginning parts of the, um, game because it turns out it was so weird. I'll go ahead and get started. Um, for some reason, well, I'll tell it after this. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went, as he knew I would. I discovered that, despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago and said the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Alright, so anyways, first of all, basically we're just in a tutorial room, you know, pick up stuff, you know, learn how to use stuff, open the title screen, stuff like that. Alright, so anyways, as I was saying, the reason it took me a couple of tries to um, get this recording down is because, um, what's it called? A, a damn Jehovah, like, and I'm not being prejudiced, I promise you, but a damn Jehovah's Witness came by the house at, like, midnight, okay? I'm sitting here recording, and I forgot, um, and, well, I was just recording, and so I go to the door, see what's up, and he's like, would you like to become part of a Jehovah's Witness? Like, no, get out. And I didn't say that, but, um, so I go back in, and I usually mute my mic whenever I um, turn it off, or what, not turn off the computer, but just I mute my mic so nothing, background noise doesn't get in it. And so I go back, and I forget that it was on mute, and I was like, well, fuck. And so I ended up having to redo this, so um, please don't be mad if I don't think anything is scary for the first part. I know it's not the best way to start a new Let's Play, but I mean, it's whatever. I'll make up for it. We got a key in our inventory. Yes. Okay, and you know what? I'm just gonna make sure that my mic is not on mute this time. All right, good. Okay, now we can leave. You. I'm going to say this, I'm not going to be reading the notes or anything, 
because that is um, not necessarily a waste of time, but it takes a lot of video time, and I want to keep my videos around 10 minute minimum, 15 at the most. So, we want to take this rock, and then there's a uh, latch or hatch right here. There we go. And this um, stuff that's glowing, I guess, white on your screen, on your first person view, that means that you're freezing to death and you don't need to be out in the snow too long. look around. I believe, yes, there's a flare right here. And I don't know why, I think it was bad game design in my opinion, but um, it turns out that the glow stick is actually better than the li flashlight, which makes absolutely no sense. Well, no, excuse me, I think they both have their own purpose really, now that I think about it. Because see, look at how the glow stick doesn't really reach that far, and but it glows all around you. If you were to use flashlight, it doesn't go all around you, but you can see farther away. So I don't know, maybe that was the reasoning. A hammer. Hammer time. Whenever you see a hand on a bookshelf, that's kind of like an obvious thing. go through here. Stop tremoring. Gas potion. I forgot about that. Of course you can't move stuff while you have like a second object in uh, or if you have an object in both your hands. Likewise, can't open doors with two objects. So, yeah. Oh my god, the first puzzle. It's so easy. That's the last thing I'd do, is go down even further into a mine shaft or whatever this is. I guess we'll go to the offices, that's closer. Here we are. Yeah, th this just so happens to be the room where the fucking guy came to my door and I had to stop playing. I might, um, I don't know, I might do a little blooper thing or whatever at the end of this let's play, but I don't know. Backstrin. And like I said, I'm not gonna read these, so you have to pause and read it yourself, I'm sorry. got this lovely little save station. Open the drawers. Another note. 